This is a Friday Shoes production. It's lesson 7 7 in our books on page 386. The target is I can find the total surface area of prisms and cylinders. Surface area, basically the outer shell of a three dimensional shape. So there's a few terms you need to know. Let's start with lateral face. It says a lateral face of a solid, and we're talking about three dimensional figures, is any flat surface that is not a base. The lateral surface area of a solid is the sum of the areas of its lateral faces. You might call them the sides. The total surface area of a solid is the sum of the areas of all of its surfaces or faces. You can see there's a three dimensional picture there of a rectangular prism and it gives you the definitions and the formulas for lateral surface area and total surface area. We're going to be focusing in on this one right here. I'll circle it and this is the one you want to write down for sure. How to calculate the total surface area of any prism or cylinder and that is S equals pH plus 2B. So let's talk about what each one of those means. Well, the P stands for the perimeter of the base. H stands for the height of the prism. And the B stands for base area, which we've used before. And that is stated in each one of those, the lateral surface area and the total surface area information there. So to see it in action, let's try this example here. I got two ways to do this and two ways to find the surface area. You might call this like wrapping a gift. How much paper do you need to wrap this? And that's what we're talking about. How much area do we need to cover? We'll take a look at this figure here. We got a rectangular prism that has a base of three meters and seven meters. That'd be the length and the width. And then of course the height is 12 meters. So the first step is to find the lateral surface area. And to do that, you take P times H, which is the perimeter of the base times the height. So the perimeter is gonna be 20. You can see the color coordination there. The length and the width, find the perimeter, you get 20. So that's what your P is. And then of course, height is, tw is 12, so we take the 20, which is the perimeter, times by the 12, and we get 240. That's what we have for our P and our H. Now, keep in mind, we're looking for total surface area, so we're going to take the lateral surface area, which is your P times your H. Notice that right here. It's the same deal. There's your P and your H. And we're going to add it with two bases. So really, we're taking on the area of the base, which is going to be 21. We have two of those at the top and the bottom. And we're adding it with that lateral surface area, which we already calculated, which was 240. So we have two bases, which are 21 each. And then we have all the way around, all that red, all the way around is 240. So when we add those together, we have 282 square meters. Now let me show you the old school way of doing this. And you can use this method, or you can do it both ways and see uh, if it matches up. It should be the same. So we've got the same picture here. And I made a net, we call that NET, net of this, where I actually unfolded it all. These are all the different rectangles that make up that picture right there. So you see the top and the bottom are made up of what we call the base, or are gonna be three meters by seven meters. You can see it right here. So there's 21 meters. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the area of each one of these rectangles and then add them all up. So I got 21 there. I've got another 21 on the top, so we call that the bottom and the top right there. And then the different pieces, you can see this one's made up of six different rectangles. 
You can see the, the bigger sides are going to be 7 meters by 12 meters. Those are 84 meters squared. So we just do 7 times 12. And then we've got the remaining, which is the 3 meter by 12 meters. And those are 36 meters each. When you add all that up, guess what? You get the same answer, 282 meters squared. You may like this method better than the first method. doesn't matter which one you use. I'm going to use the formula because then I don't have to draw the pictures of all the different rectangles, and I don't want to screw that up. All right, here's example two. The ramp for competitive water skiing is a wedge-shaped ramp that is covered in wax or fiberglass. Find the total surface area of the ramp. All right. Similarly, just because it's triangular, uh, it's a triangular prism doesn't mean we're going to change anything other than we have a different base. So formula stays the same. We still need to find the perimeter of the, to find the surface area, we have to find the perimeter of the base times that by the height of the prism plus two bases, or the area of the bases. So to do that, we're going to find the perimeter first, then we'll find the, the height and then, of course, the bases. So here we are. The perimeter is just your 1.8, your 6.8, and your 7 all added up. That's how, uh, that's the distance around that base, which is, again, it's a triangular prism, so we're going around the triangle. So we have 15.6 for our perimeter. The height is going to be from one triangle to the other triangle. What's the distance? Well, it's 4.8. I highlighted it in blue there for you. Next, let's find out what the B is, the base area. We have to find the base area, which is the area of that triangle. The area of the triangle is, if you remember, one-half base times height of the triangle. So we've got the base of 6.8 and a 1.8 for the height. So when we multiply all that together, we get 6.12. That would be 6.12 meters to the second power. Now, we have to add, or excuse me, we have to put all these pieces into that formula and then multiply. And if you remember, it is P times H plus 2B. So we have 15.6 times 4.8 plus 2 times 6.12. And when you do that, you get an answer of 87.12 meters to the second power. All right, you give it a shot here. Got a rectangular prism and a triangular prism. Find the total surface area of each prism. You can stop the video, come on back, see how you did. All right, let's look at A here. Well, we do know this. We need to find this total surface area, which is perimeter of the base times the height plus two base areas. So when we do that, we find the perimeter. That's 21 plus 6 plus 21 plus 6. And that gets you 54. And then you're going to take the height, which is 9. That's from the bottom to the top. And add that with 2 times the base area, which would be 6 times 21. So 6 times 21 base is going to be 126. So we have 486 plus 252 for a grand total of 738 square yards. All right, let's take a look at B here. Triangular prism, doesn't scare me. Same formula. So we're going to find the perimeter. Then we're going to multiply by the height, and then add, add on two base areas. Those are all the pieces. So when I do 3 times 4, excuse me, 3 plus 4 plus 5, those are all the sides there of the triangle. That is the perimeter of the base, which is 12. Now, the height is the distance between the two triangles. Those are the bases. That's the, that's the hard part of this, is people got to remember, the triangle is the base. That's why 3, 4, and 5 add together is 12. And that's why we have P there is 12. The height is 6. That's the distance between the two triangles. And then our base area is going to be 3 times 4, which is the base and the height of the triangle, and then divide by 2. So that's 12 divided by 2, which is 6. And that's where that green 6 comes along. So we do the math there. We got 72. We have 12. We add those together, and we have a total of 84 square feet.
All right, let's talk about total surface area of cylinders. Now, cylinders, very much like prisms, problem is we don't have a perimeter of a uh, cylinder. We have what we call circumference. Same difference as we say. It's the distance around the base. So you're going to notice right here that this formula is really the same thing, except we change this P to a C because we actually have circumference. And to calculate circumference, we do 2 pi times r. And you can see it here. I'm going to highlight it in red. And that's just the distance around the circle. And when you lay it out flat, and you can see the net down here, and it's all color coordinated for you. When you lay that out, the top of that rectangle is actually the circumference of the circle. And the height, of course, when you can see there in blue, you can see that down there is going to be from one circle to the other circle, the top to the bottom of the can, if you want to call it a can. And then you can see plus 2 pi r squared. Pi r squared is actually the base area, meaning the circle area. And there's two circles, and that's where that 2 comes from. So in the end, what you, you end up doing is calculating, if you look at the pieces here, you've got one big rectangle, and you have two of those circles. So you're adding those two circles plus the rectangle, the area of the rectangle plus the two area, or the areas of the two circles. All right, take a look at this example here. It says, find the lateral area in the total surface area of the cylinder round to the nearest tenth. We're actually just going to find the surface area. To do that, we have to look and say, okay, the radius is two feet, and they say that the height, this is between the two circles, is three feet. Not a problem. So we have, again, in this case, we have circumference, not perimeter, just because it's a uh, cylinder. So let's take that. Now, to find the circumference, you have to take 2 times pi times radius. Then, of course, we multiply by the height. Now, we're going to add it with 2 times the base area. And the base area is going to be pi times radius squared. Let me throw all the numbers in there. You can see them. They're color-coordinated. So you can see 2 times 3.14 times 2 represents the 2 pi r. 3 is representing the h. And then we have plus 2 times pi, which is 3.14, we're estimating here, times 2 to the second power, because the radius is 2. When we do all that, we end up with 37.7 plus the 25.12 for a grand total of 62.8 square feet. Remember, our surface area is always going to be measured in square units, and it's an area. Areas are always measured in square units. All right, how about you give it a shot? It's the last one. Find the total surface area of this cylinder and then round to the nearest tenth. You can stop the video and then come on back and see how you did. All right, step one. Remember your formula. Perimeter of the base, in this case, is going to be the circumference, times the height, plus two base areas. In this case, two circles. So, let's take our formula, 2 pi r, which is the circumference, times the height, plus 2 times pi r squared, which is the area of the circles. And we plug in our numbers. Radius is 5. Do simple calculation. We get 314 plus the 157. We have a grand total of 471 square millimeters. Again, I'd be using a calculator for all this. I'm using 3.14. If you're using the pi button, your numbers probably are a little bit different. And either way is going to work out for me. Don't forget, you can always rewatch this video later or look in the examples in the book. Or you can take a look at some of the personal tutor videos that we have online on the online textbook. And as usual, this has been a Friday Shoes production.